A single tick bite can change your health for months or even years or even permanently. In this final part of our tick series, we're talking about the long-term effects of tick-borne illnesses, what recovery generally looks like, and how to protect your health moving forward. Some tick-borne illnesses can be treated easily, quickly, you recover fine, no complications. But others may leave lingering side effects and complications that can stick with you for the rest of your life. It can even affect your immune system and your nervous system long-term. Delayed treatment or a severe infection will increase your risk. Here are some of the common lasting complications that some patients may face. For Lyme disease, oftentimes patients will experience complications like fatigue, joint pain, and a lot of the time even brain fog. Also, long-term heart complications, nervous system complications, and possible kidney complications as well. Very important to treat it early. For aerial leukiosis and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, if those are not treated early, they could be detrimental not only to your health, but also your life. They can cause long-term damage to the heart, nerves, or even the kidneys. Like we mentioned in the previous series, Alpha-Gal syndrome, while it is not technically a tick-borne illness, it is an allergy that you can develop toward red meat if you are bitten by a tick with this. Complications of this, allergic reactions minor to rashes all the way to severe, like an anaphylactic reaction. These may last short-term, long-term, maybe even the rest of your life. It's hard to really know. Not trying to scare you, just something to keep in mind. Next time you're out hiking about, protect yourself like we talked about in part two. The good news is, is that with early diagnosis and treatment, totally treatable. Many people even recover completely without complications. For those with lingering issues, here's what you can do that might help. Follow up with your provider. If you're in Tennessee, more than happy to see you. You may end up having to see a specialist, allergist, rheumatologist, neurologist, dermatologist, etc. Stay healthy, fluids, rest, appropriate diet, so on and so forth. You may be able to even find support groups on social media. Like we talked about in part two, protection is going to be your biggest benefit and your strongest tool. Once you've had a tick-borne illness, yes, you can get another one. It's not like viruses that you build up antibodies to and you can't get infected again or it's less likely to. With these infections, they can be repetitive, unfortunately. Let's talk a little bit more about the natural prevention techniques that you can use and whether or not natural repellents actually work compared to DEET. In Tennessee, tick activity typically begins in the spring, peaks in the summer in the warm months, and throughout August. However, mild winters in the south means that ticks may possibly be around year-round, especially the Lone Star Tick. This is why prevention is not just a summer thing, it's a year-round habit that you need to develop. I'm all about the safer alternatives to things like DEET. Can't say I'm a huge fan of that one. That's a different topic for a different day, but today let's talk a little bit more about the natural repellents that actually do work for kids and pets and yourself. Essential oils like lemon eucalyptus, citronella oil, or even cedar oil. These essential oils are great safe alternatives to over-the-counter purchased repellents like DEET. Tick-resistant clothing is also one that you can use that's made of more tightly woven fabric. Regular pet checks and grooming, they can be the vectors of ticks, so remember that. Always check your, your pets and other animals, cats, dogs, so on and so forth for ticks that they could have on them, especially if they're indoor pets. Natural repellents, yes, absolutely they can help. However, they just may not be as long-lasting as DEET or permethrin treated clothing. Just remember to apply frequently if you're using a natural repellent. Remember, the stakes are high. Tick-borne illnesses like ehrlichiosis and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, a lot easier to prevent them than it is to treat them. And they can progress very quickly. Prevention is always safer than treatment. So tick season is here. Right now, thankfully we're ending, but it's coming back again next year. And if we have a mild winter this year, something that you need to keep in mind year round. Whether you choose the natural options that we talked about or the over-the-counter purchase ones, typical repellents, DEET, permethrin, etc., staying consistent is what really counts. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks for joining, and I will see you next time.